Thunder X Hunter episode 72. Let's look at back with the troop. You can see how much they love him. This looks super comfortable. Imagine having this much confidence among the Phantom Troop. The Phantom Troop that wants to kill you. The raw power. Mark my words, Hisoka is going to turn over a new leaf and join Gon and Kilua as a friend. And then they're all going to attend Krolo and Neon's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> together as friends. Not once in all my 8,000 videos have I ever been wrong, so this is certainly no exception. Chase X and X Chance. Wait, is that? That clothing looks awfully familiar. Oh, it is her. Yeah. Damn, Glue's whole family is involved. What does this mean, I wonder? Is it an undercover operation? Wow, the confidence. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> If I'm Isoka, I'm just hearing what I want to hear in that. And what I'm hearing is, I mean a lot to you. I'm a very significant person in your life. You can't be disheartened. <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. This is maybe very controversial, actually. Keeping all ethical boundaries in mind. Psychologically, you don't want to be too disheartened by rejection. From experience, the heart and mind are often disconnected. Evidence for this can be found in oneself, I think, for most people. Because, you know, if asked what kind of person do you want to date, you'll give one answer. And then you look at your dating history and it's like the complete opposite of that. So what do you really want? It's okay. It's so robust mentally that all criticism, all rebukes, all threats, everything is like so much water on a raincoat. Hunting him to the ends of the earth and loving him are not mutually exclusive <laughs> anyway. I'm tired of Genther. <laughs> I just want him to die. I think the most poetic thing to happen would be Genther's team is compromised. And so in their desperation, they use the, the dice thing and all that luck lands on them. The bad luck that's been built up. That would be the game kind of punishing them in a sense. We have that. This is going to be an episode without Gon and Kahlua. I totally, totally didn't expect this show to be like this, where we have four protagonists, but it's kind of like a random assortment of who's in focus. Although Kahlua and Gon always together, most of the time. They have a plan. Their plan also has the benefit of being a little bit obscured. That's a classic device in shows and movies where the true game or objective is hidden under a subsidiary game where winning and losing doesn't matter. And in fact, maybe even losing is part of the, the overall plan. It's a fun position to be in. Oh, there they are. Kahlua is still paying the price for <laughs> Gon's desires. Okay, sure. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Gone are the days where I, I was like comparing this stuff to real life. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. Miski's just next level. I mean, you got two weeks. I feel like Gon is going to be doing this for two weeks with no sleep. He'll get it. You can imagine its utility. Lethal or not. Right? I'm also curious. If we had only thought to ask earlier. Is this, is this real? Is this real? I feel like the target audience is a little bit young for this, maybe? No. Yeah. This oh. is lost on Chloe, he's too young. He's not the target audience. Ah, give it time. <laughs> give it a few years. Well, he didn't get launched into space this time. He didn't get team rocketed. Okay. 
Oh damn, they're just guerrilla warfaring it. It's interesting that they're being this aggressive when they want to kill time. Oops. Yeah. Oh, they're making minions. As I've said, as irritating as this guy is, he's really good at what he does. He's really smart. Oh, okay. Just murdering him. So it's not a direct assault at all. They're luring them out. They're just setting traps. Some next level exploit. Oh, this is... Yeah, this is tough. How long do you let this go on? Damn, they're good. Yeah, but I don't know. Does it work out in your favor if they're setting this many traps and accumulating this many cards? Yeah, you gave going a mission. He's just gonna do this for a while. Sometimes that's how it is. I mean, some things you can measure progress towards, you can see gradual improvement, and that gives you faith that you're getting there. Other things are a little bit more binary, like it'll be nothing at all until it's suddenly something. This seems like one of those things. It took me a second to realize how gigantic that rock was, but for what? Yeah, what's the plan here? If you knew they're gonna chase you, could you not, like, fortify your position and set traps, etc.? Maybe they did. Maybe this uh, lured them into a false sense of security. Come on, Barry, don't let us down. This also seems like one of those things where, like, if you just sleep one day and come back to it, you'll you'll have made leaps and bounds overnight. Sleep. Interesting. This is so... so interesting in her teaching approach. It's like, just do it. Figure it out. Do it until you figure it out. Wow, that's really good that they saw through that. I don't know. Gendo's also good at, like, masking the game. That's frustrating. You're gonna hit him with his giant-ass rock. Cute, but... Yeah, I don't know. This feels too good to be true. Is it the real one? He's a double. I'm so confused. What the hell is going on? What the hell happened? Um, what the heck? I'm, I'm lost, <laughs> honestly. What is going on? What exactly was he after in Greed Island? At first I thought it was Genther's doing, but doesn't seem that way. I mean, do we even need to continue then? Like, why are we even in the game anymore? Can we just leave? We got what we needed to know about Jing, sort of. We learned that Jing actually really loves his own DNA. And I mean, literally his own DNA, not really Gon, because that's all he knows of Gon. I guess we just need to defeat Genther, because he's, he's, he's terrible. The end. Fake. It can make a copy. 
でもコンプリートの対象にならないえアイテム化もできない、えー、おもろいフェイスコンティニュー Wow, that one was sort of a letdown after all the inappropriate stuff we've been getting. For all the focus on Go in this arc, it would be really cool if Kalu was the one that comes through to seal the deal. It's weird, like, I'm not alone in this. Reading comments, I see that other people share a, a slight feeling of tragicness, tragedy in Kalu's character. But I think the ultimate reading of that will depend a lot on what Kalu ends up doing, who he ends up becoming. And like I said earlier, I think there's a path. Where, despite him being overlooked somewhat, despite people sort of favoring Gon, despite Gon himself sometimes perhaps overlooking Kalua, Kalua can just eat it and do what he has to do and be the one, you know, like be the guy he, he can be for himself, by himself. There's something really cool about that. To her credit, I feel like Bisky is one of the, one of his best supporters, subtly, despite their, their constant clashing and her team rocketing him. You can tell she really admires and respects him.